And the most important one is it increases lifespan. And lastly, the dehydrated products are nutritious. Here in the Philippines, the most common and old methods of dehydration process is by the use of sun drying. However, with this kind of method, uh, the dehydrated products are exposed to dirt, insects, rodents, and birds, thereby lowering the quality of the product, and it requires much more time and space. With that, the researcher proposed to design and fabricate a cabinet dehydrator wherein it produces quality products and requires lesser time and space. For the objectives of the study, the general objective is to design Sorry. is to design, fabricate, and evaluate the performance of a cabinet fruit and vegetable dehydrator powered by five 100-watt incandescent bulbs. Specifically, it aims to design and fabricate a low-cost fruit and vegetable dehydrator according to the standards recommended by Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standards or the PAES. It also seeks to determine the performance evaluation of the machine in terms of the reading capacity, moisture reduction rate, moisture loss, operating R, and the dehydrating efficiency. And lastly, to analyze its operating cost. For the significance of the study, the cabinet dehydrator will be beneficial to first environment because fruit and vegetable leftovers are decreased, thereby reducing the environmental pollution. Followed by the household, community households, because large expenses coming from fruit and vegetable spoilage is prevented, and furthermore, it is, a, it is convenient due to its low power requirement, and it is a safe way of dehydrating products due to food grade material used. For the farmers and small business enterprises, they could preserve their products for later use and decrease post-harvest losses through the machine. And lastly, for the students and the researchers, they can use it as a device for further testing of other commodities for dehydration and likewise, results can be used for further enhancement in the design of the dehydrators. For the time and place of the study, the planning and designing stage started from April to May 2019, the fabrication on June to July 2019 in Molo, Iloilo City, and lastly, for the machine print testing and final, final performance evaluation from October 22, 2019 to November 15, 2019 at the Appropriate Technology Center, Central Philippine University. For the... For the description of the machine, to, for the external parts, we have the rubber roller. It is installed for, in the machine for easy transportation. Two auxiliary, auxiliary fans, which is installed adjacent to the source of heat, which is the incandescent bulb, to increase the airflow rate and to assure the equal distribution of heat inside the dehydrating chamber. And the temperature controller, it regulates the amount of heat inside the dehydrating chamber. Heat source chamber, which is located at the bottom of the machine, wherein it is installed in a removable type manner so that if there is an electric or bulb damage, it could be easily accessed. And glass door for easy monitoring of the products being de dehydrated. And lastly, an exhaust, which is composed of 1 cm diameter holes. For the internal parts, we have two removable trays. It is in a perforated type of tray so that to assure the equal distribution of heat or to heat to easily uh, flow. And lastly is for the source of heat. Again, it, the source of heat will be coming from 500 watt incandescent bulbs. So this figure shows the principle of operation of the machine. So, the operation of the machine will start as the fan and the source of heat are plugged in. So, the samples are sliced into uniform thickness and first setting of the appropriate temperature through the temperature controller and preheating of the de dehydrator is done until the desired temperature is reached. After which, the samples 
are placed on the removable trays and loaded inside the dehydrating, dehydrating chamber. To assure the uniform distribution of heat, again, auxiliary fans are installed adjacent where the source of heat is located. And when the machine reaches 2 degrees higher than the set temperature, the bulbs will automatically turn off. While on the other hand, if the temperature inside the dehydrating chamber is 2 degrees lower than the set temperature, it will again turn on to maintain the set temperature. For the performance evaluation of the machine, three, three trials per commodity were utilized and having a total of for 12 trials because I used four commodities, two for vegetables, namely chili pepper and carrots, and uh, the other one, the other two is for fruits, which is mango and banana. So the initial weight of sample per trial before loading inside the dehydrator was determined to know the input capacity of the machine. A 100 gram fresh sample was then separated for 24 hours and subjected to oven drying under 103 degrees Celsius. And these oven dried samples were used to determine the, the initial moisture content of the fresh samples. The dehydrator underwent preheating for about 15 to 20 minutes on the average and sliced samples were then placed on the perforated trays lined with muslin cloth. And the spacing of the commodities were approximately or equally spaced, estimated. estimated. And to assure that the heat will be distributed on the commodities equally. And each trial were dehydrated for five hours. After which, these dried samples were then weighed again to determine the output capacity and again oven drying was made to determine the final moisture content of the dehydrated products. And lastly, dehydrated products were then subjected to an organoleptic test to deter with 10 random samples to determine the palatability and if it is acceptable to the people. For the materials used, weighing scale is used to determine the weight of the samples, timer to monitor the dehydrating time, knife to manually slice the samples, digital vernier caliper or stainless digital vernier caliper to determine the thickness of the machine, uh, the samples rather, oven to determine the initial and final moisture content of the samples, and zipper bags for packaging. For the methodology, we have preparation of samples, subjecting of samples to dehydration, laboratory analysis, and lastly, our gatoleptic test. For the preparation of samples, again, I used four commodities, two for fruits and two for vegetables. I prepared first the materials needed, and then followed by the disinfection of the muslin cloth for 15 minutes, and then slicing of the samples, and getting its average thickness, weighing the samples before loading, and again, equally spacing of the samples on the removable trays. After which, the samples were then subjected to dehydration, wherein different temperatures or different commodities correspond to different temperatures. It is according to the Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standards, that when dehydrating banana, it should be under 56 degrees Celsius. Likewise, the, with the mango, which is also 56 degrees Celsius, chili pepper, 65 degrees Celsius, and carrots, 52 degrees Celsius. And for the laboratory analysis, again, the, the samples were, the fresh and dried samples were subjected to oven drying for under 103 degrees Celsius for 24 hours to determine the initial and final moisture content. For the organoleptic test, it is used to determine the palatability and if it is acceptable to the people. It was conduct conducted inside Central Philippine University with 10 random respondents for each trial or for each commodity. And let's proceed to the results and discussion. This table shows the daily reading capacity of the machine. Um, 
Uh, this table includes the operating time, initial weight, and the average thickness. Uh, the inconsistency in the average thickness was due to the manual slicing of the samples. And as what we can see, the mango had the highest daily reading capacity, capacity since it has larger thickness and surface area among the commodities. And for the moisture reduction rate, it is uh, obtained by, by subtracting the initial to final weight divided by the operating R. And still, mango had the highest moisture reduction rate because it had the highest amount of moisture removed per hour and because of its high initial weight. And according to one of my literatures, commodities with high sugar content also corresponds with high moisture content. And this graph shows the moisture reduction rate curve. For So again, mango had the highest moisture reduction rate. Yellow corresponds for the mango, green for the banana, blue for the carrots, and orange for the, and red for the chili pepper. For dehydrating efficiency, the heat vaporization of water for the different commodities varies because the heat vaporization of water is dependent on the temperature used. So heat required was obtained by multiplying the heat vaporization of water to the moisture removed and heat supplied was computed or was uh, uniform for all the commodities since it, uh, it used 500 watts of incandescent bulbs all throughout. And the efficiency ranged 4.85% to 11.27%, which is too low for the recommended dryer efficiency, which is 75% based from PAES, because the main reason for this was the materials utilized in the fabrication of the machine, which is the stainless steel sheets, and the glass door has high thermal conductivity, which is about 15 watts per meter Kelvin and 1 watt meter per, per Kelvin, respectively. And according to literature, a large number or a large amount of thermal conductivity is a good heat conductor. Thereby, when the dehydration process as a go is happening, there is a huge amount of heat losses. For the moisture loss, uh, Mingo has the highest or has the lowest uh, moisture loss, which is 48.22%, while the chili pepper has the highest, which is 75.58%, because of, again, its thickness and surface area. And also, Another factor of Mingo having the lowest moisture loss because it, the duration of dehydration time was fixed to five hours. And given that Mingo's has high sucrose content, it should have been dehydrated for more than five hours. So a higher moisture loss value can be obtained from Mingo if the duration time was lengthened. For the organoleptic test, uh, the parameters included were the color, odor, flavor, moisture content, and general taste. So on the three commodities, it arrived with a score of 3.71 to 4.43. And before that, the scores for the organoleptic test is 5 is the highest and 1 is the lowest. So the score 3.71 to 4.3 corresponds in between good and averagely good. Therefore, it uh, it confirms that the products made from the machine were acceptable. And the electrical consumption rate was uniform for all the trials and all the commodities, which is 2.5 kilowatt hour. For the operating cost, it includes the fixed cost includes depreciation, interest and investment, repair and maintenance, insurance for a total of 45.89 per day pesos per day. For the variable cost, electrical energy consu consumption. Labor cost total for a total of two hundred seventy or for a total of two hundred twenty seven point fifty pesos per day. And the operating cost varies since it depends on the capacity of the machine and which varies also depending on the type of the commodity used. For the banana, the operating cost is zero point sixty seven per gram, zero point forty eight pesos per gram for the mango, one point twenty four pesos per gram for the chili pepper, and one point zero three 
pesos for the car. For the conclusions, based on the result, the machine was made of various food grade materials since the study was dealing with food processing. The operating principle of the machine and its performance evaluation conforms to the standards set by the PAS. And for the total electric consumption rate of the generator using 500 watt incandescent bulbs with an operating time of 5 hours is 2.5 kilowatt hour. And this table shows the summary of the results which includes the different parameters, the rating capacity, moisture reduction rate, the rating efficiency, moisture loss, organoleptic test, and the operating cost. For the recommendations, edges especially located in the doors should be sealed well to prevent and minimize heat losses and leakages. Based on the observations, glass doors should be replaced with a side glass to minimize heat losses since glass is thermal conductivity. And lastly, insulation should be further improved. An application of plywood can be made as insulation to minimize heat losses during the dehydration process. And that would be all. Thank you. Thank you, Ems. So. Um, I think um, you have recognized that uh, the major problem with your um, technology uh, is uh, the very low dryer efficiency. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, only 11, 27 percent. Yes, you know, sir. When the recommended is 75 yes. percent. Now, in your table eight, um, you have the, the, um, the factors that would affect drying uh, efficiency, right? One of these is heat required and uh, heat supplied, yes. right? Yes, now you will notice that um, these are computed values, right? Yes, sir. The, um, heat the heat vaporization of water is constant, while the heat required and heat supplied were computed. The heat required is based on the recommendation for the different uh, samples. Yes, sir. It is obtained by multiplying the moisture removed to the heat vaporization of water. Also, it's a product of the, the moisture removal. Yes, sir. Ah, so it's not constant. Uh, the, yes, sir. It's not constant. Oh. Now, you see, I, I thought that the heat required is uh, a requirement for the drying of the different uh, drying materials, right? Yes, sir. But if you notice, given the different uh, heat required, you know, you have supplied a tremendous amount of uh, <laughs> energy, yes, sir. right? Think of 556, no? and then uh, the, the highest is 1,000. Yes, but sir. you have supplied 9, a lot no, of energy, 9,000. Yes, sir. No? So, if I need only something and you uh, uh, give me a lot, I will not really be using all of those. So, somehow, the efficiency would be affected. Yes, sir. But maybe if you have limited your um, heat supply, um, which is more or less cons consistent yes, with what is um, being required, maybe the efficiency would be, be higher. higher. Yes, sir. Right? Okay, sir. And besides, you know, uh, you peg on the time of uh, drying, drying you know, which may not be true. Because it um, um, doesn't mean that if you have reached five hours, you have the right drying. Yes, sir. It's maybe below or above uh, the required uh, drying of the different uh, materials. Yes, you know? sir. So why? Well, how would you explain that? Um, maybe, sir, I could recommend them to try using or decrease the number of incandescent bulbs for, of go because you said a while ago that the heat supplied was large enough for the heat required. That is why my 
the efficiency is too low, so I can recommend, sir, to decrease the number of incandescent bulbs and as well as increase the time of dehydrating so that the amount of moisture removed could be also higher, wherein it will result to a higher efficiency of my machine, sir. So, basically, sir, if I will uh, just look on how I solved the efficiency, the efficiency will increase if the moisture removed also increased and if the heat supply is decreased. So, that's it, sir. The efficiency will be high or will increase. Uh, in your design, uh, have you considered about airflow? Um, I constructed or I installed sir, two auxiliary fans which will help increase the airflow of the ano, dehydration process. But I am not, ano, sir, uh, I forgot to determine the velocity of the airflow inside of my machine. Because it might be the case that it's too much uh, airflow that all of your heat is just flowed out of the yeah. yes, sir. Uh, the machine, yeah. and also uh, we we know that this is a machine for able to it commercialize. I think uh, suggestion to add a timer also that it could automatically turn off after five hours or six hours. Okay, okay sir, noted. Did you compare your um, dried mango with the commercial dried mango? Uh, actually, sir, I tried the uh, to, sir the quality because on my pre-testing I used a overripe mango. However, when dried, it uh, tend to have rough surfaces or crumbled edges, which is when compared to the commercialized dehydrated mangoes, it is soft and fine. So that is why I used. In my final performance evaluation, a uh, rarely type commodity. You see, you could have included in the organoleptic test uh, commercial dried mango. Uh, no, sir. I you could have oh, included sir. your product and the commercial dried oh, mango. Okay, also, uh, dehydrated banana or they have uh, commercial... Uh, commercially available products for chili pepper and uh, carrots and see um, what would be the likely um, result of the test. Will the result of the organoleptic test uh, be more or less the same or maybe your result is better than the commercially available? Yes, then sir. I think you will have some sort of a gauge uh, of the quality of your product. Yes, sir. Actually, sir, my product is raw. I don't apply anything. It is completely raw and natural. Okay. Thank you, sir. I will add it to my recommendations. Yeah. Uh, I cannot also find the maximum capacity of the uh, dehydrator. I have only, sir, the operating capacity on the first table. But do you have the, like, sorry. capacity, like, five kilos of mango? Can be fit um, in there? No, sir. I only have the dehydrating capacity. Ah, I have, sir, initial weight. But uh, the maximum capacity of your dehydrator. If I'm a buyer, I would buy how many uh, can buy that because it can dehydrate 5 kilos an hour? Or ah. five, five, for 5 kilos a day to dehydrate? Or ah. do you have uh, that uh, uh, dehydrating capacity? Uh, Actually, sir, that was my maximum capacity, which is in grams only, because I have a uh, only a limited perforated tray, which is only com composed of two removable trays, and that is why I have a small Therefore, capacity. Therefore, the initial weight would be also the maximum yes, capacity sir. of the dehydrator. But do you think you can still uh, add additional trays? Yes, sir, it can be. Given the, you know, the, the thickness 
of your materials. <coughs> However, I... sir, I think it should be further um, studied if the 5 watts can still sustain if the amount of heat required if additional trace is uh, added. But how do you know that the, the configuration that you have no, is more or less um, consistent or, uh, uh, shall we say, balanced? What is your basis in designing only two trays and having only that given the capacity of your uh, uh, machine? Um, because, sir, based on the previous machines, they were composed of various or uh, most number of trays, such as four or five trays. However, with the four or five trays, um, the most dehydrated products were found on the bottom since the heat is directly uh, pa passes through the first tray and also on the upper bottom were in the middle trays were not that uh, dehydrated because the air cannot easily pass through. That is why I only made two perforated trays so that to assure that the heat is equal to my first and second tray. Are there no drippings for mango? Uh, no, sir, because I used muslin cloth. And I think the, the moisture is, was uh, absorbed by the muslin cloth and then because of the heat, this uh, moisture was evaporated. So. Question, Pam. Okay, while they are still thinking, why did you stop at five hours? Um, I, ano ma, ah, uh, because, uh, Say by the bell. <laughs> I know. Yay! Thank you! Okay. Thank you, Ems.